Texas Auto Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. A guitar guy shows you how to build a business. We've got a winner in the iLoud Micro Monitor Sweepstakes. Just back from Facebook F8 convention, whoa. You're at the place, listen to that sweet guitar. It's Pensado's place. Hey everybody, I think you're gonna have a great time today. Uh, I guess you could say, Herb, the theme today is a bit of technology, right? Yeah, a lot of technology. I think, uh, well, shoot, let's share it with folks. All right, let's do it. Let's roll it. Uh, welcome everybody, good to be with you. Thanks for stopping by and yeah. always thanks for your support. For sure. uh, also to our great friends, the Blackbird Academy, Westlake yeah. Pro, yeah. Avid, DTS, Lander, Recording Connection, Fab Factory, and Studio 202 DC, who was actually at Facebook. Oh, cool. Uh, by the way, the iLoud mm -hmm. Micro Monitor Sweepstakes, it is on and popping. The names are coming in. Make sure you sign up. Don't blow it. Go to ikmultimedia.com. Yeah forward slash Pensado. See that URL right there? You want to get there. I see it. Here are the details. You still have five weeks to win weekly, and you'll also be eligible for the grand prize. Look at some of this prizing. <laughs> T-Rax Max, yep. T-Rax Vintage Compressor Bundle, mm. Total Studio Max, Lurson Mastering Console, Kevin. Arc 2, iLoud Micro Monitors. Uh, here's a quick bit. IK Multimedia is a really cool company. They put creativity and functionality and design front and center so the iLab micro monitors are a prime example of that. Great sound at a great price, or as Dave and I like to say, these, these babies, babies bang. bang. Absolutely, you can see it on the graphic right there. Yeah. You can also hear them for yourself. Here's a schedule of dates where they will be on tour in a city near you. Oh, Stop so cool. by, give a listen, tell them Pensado sent you. I will tell you that I've gotten a few emails where people have said, uh, should I get them? I went, yeah, they oh, said no. I'm getting them. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're going to they're gonna be very pleased. Make sure you sign up. Again, go to ikmultimedia.com forward slash Pensado and win some stuff, please. It's really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, speaking of tech... Part of what we did um, is we just came back from the Facebook F8 convention, took the team up, marketing team, social media team, Chong or a few others. Um, Chong, we come up. Let's, you wanna, want us to, let's talk about it really quickly. We'll, and the reason that this is relevant to you, come on, come on. The reason this is relevant to you is because we saw so many things in audio that are important. So many things that you can use to build your business with Instagram and Messenger yeah. and stuff. Is that your take? Yeah, completely. It was, it was honestly insane just to see where the future was going. Mm -hmm. It's like you wouldn't have any idea that half the stuff they're already working on was possible. Mm -hmm. It was um, unbelievable. We saw a drone the size of a 737 literally hanging in the, in the, in the convention center that is, weighed less than 1,000 pounds takes the power of three hair dryers yeah. and can stay aloft for like six months. And they're so gonna use that to send signals to you. We, we um, and a lot, of this stuff, a lot of this stuff is online on YouTube. We saw a keynote speech where they were teaching somebody language by having them hear through their skin, not use their ears. And through electrodes and it changed your neural path. So you could almost you could teach somebody something in Mandarin and they could repeat it in Spanish. I mean, it was it was amazing. It was such next level stuff. But then there were other things. Now, like for Oculus and virtual reality, all of it was really fine. You did that, but it didn't come together until you till you till you did audio. Yeah. There was a lot of discussion from the chieftains about how important audio was. We met a lot of audio engineers, <clears throat> excuse me, who made the decision to go learn to code and ended up in great jobs yeah. doing audio stuff. We actually talked to them, a few of them recognized us from Pensado's place. Um, so the world that you inhabit, the skill set that you have, um, Chong, it's, it's a bunch of folks, Chongor's age, yeah. and then just my old ass. That's, that's kind of <laughs> what it was. Uh, all the old people were on elevators, all the other ones were running up and down steps. Um, but I will tell you that your world is much broader and much more exciting than you sometimes think. Would you would you yeah, take that? Was, I mean, it just opened up possibilities I didn't think were even possible. Mm -hmm. There was such a huge push for 360 video and mm -hmm. VR, mm -hmm. and as that technology moves forward, I can't imagine all the jobs that are going to be created from mm -hmm. that alone. Mm -hmm. It's. Yep. Did you see any advancement in uh, or any emphasis on the implementation of AI inside the music space, like? Am I going to be replaced next Thursday? I think I think you're still good for now. Okay, good. 
up until Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, then it could. Um, we did, but you made you make an interesting uh, point. We did see that there is the need to live both in the world that you inhabit, but you also can live in a work that can be augmented in yeah. a, in a reality yeah. or a virtual reality yeah. or other kinds. That's of stuff. That's pretty exciting. And oh, I, I mean, you know, a phone would turn to goggles. They gave us 360 cameras as swag. And you should have seen the photos that immediately happened just from. So here's the point. Um, your world's broader than you think, as we said. Uh, audio, none of this can happen. Most of it cannot happen without audio. The stuff is not done in a vacuum. Uh, that means your skill set is important. There are a lot of you guys up there. Um, and that means um, you're going to see installations that are going to be built around the globe in a bunch of different cities where you can go learn code and go do other kinds of things. So it's not that you have to come to Silicon Valley to do because Silicon Valley is coming to you. Stay tuned. It was exciting and we'll keep we'll keep reporting on it. Correct. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Now, my man, I just want to say to you guys, Dave is apparently I just got some emails about your mixes, my man, that are just like incredible. What are you doing? You, you killing it? Take I, credit. I just be me. Yeah, that's true. But you use pretty good. So. You know what? Um, I think I'm a creative person. You are no, too. You, you are a creative person and, for sure. And creativity grows in many different soils, mm -hmm. but it can also dry out and die in a few types mm -hmm. of soil. Mm -hmm. And I'm just in really good soil right now. And don't um, you find that you have to tend to the soil? Yeah. 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 Um, and we'll what... skip the fertilizer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the fertilizer part. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, you know, like. Um, Every day is not a great day when you when you live and die by your your taste. Right. But um, where I'm at now, I'm really happy with my studio. Sean and Fab Factory have been a blessing, mm -hmm. and um, I can't wait for the next one. Good stuff, brother. You're killing it. This week's guest is a guitar wizard, a studio genius, beloved by all, uh, an amazing guy. Has built his business. Um, he's a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you how to build your business. We had an amazing conversation with him a couple of weeks ago. Please enjoy our conversation with the one, the only, Mr. Tim Pierce. Tim. Good to have you back, Handshake. man. Yeah. Good. We always good run into each other in neighborhoods. Yeah, I see you guys a lot. It's good. Talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but the coolest, greatest people in music are guitar players. So. Like yourself. When that, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. Course, yeah. I mean, I every time I see it. Tim, and I see Tim a lot lately because he's working with Michaela a lot. But uh, Yeah, I'm next door just, to him, yeah. It's yeah. just a better day. Yeah, no That's question. That's nice. Thanks. But no on question. one level. Mm -hmm. On the other level, I want to break his fingers and all the instruments he brings he in because he's good. He's yeah. really good. You heard Thanks. Stop the show. I mean, yeah. uh, he didn't practice that. <laughs> he just started ripping you it. You get so. the feeling that he's never practiced. It just kind of flows out, I'm you know. You. Tim, um, tell me about your experience with Keith Olson and how that started all this. When I moved here to LA, the music business was a giant campus. Mm -hmm. I knew a couple of guys who worked for Keith Olsen. They snuck me in on a session. Two things happened. I ended up playing lead guitar on a record he was doing, and I also get, ended up getting fired from the rhythm guitar chair because I didn't quite have the skills for that. So it was a really good lesson. Keith hired me, I played lead, but the, the guitar player on the record was a guy named Chaz Sanford. Do you guys know Chaz? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he wrote, it um, was... the. The, the Baby Doll song, what was that song? He's from Atlanta, by the way. Yeah, he wrote, uh, to, co wrote Missing You for John Wayne. That's, that's it, okay, so that's what yeah. you're searching for. He's a, can, I, can I stop you? He's, he built the studio that caused the law that all the major studios wanted to shut down all the home studios. So that's for, right. for a minute, you could not own a home studio oh. because of just Yeah, that's missing. right. You almost messed up our show. <laughs> it's anyway. a, he's, he's a great guitar player, and he mm. did the rhythm guitar on the record I did, so I got two lessons out of it. I got to play on a, a nice record. I got to hook up with Keith, and Keith and I worked together to this day. Mm. Wow. So he didn't, he didn't abandon me, you know, I, uh, and, and I also got to learn that, oh boy, I gotta work, I gotta get some, this rhythm guitar playing together, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know what, there's, the, and this is, we have some students in the house. Um, there's so many times <clears throat> that your career comes from being at the right place at the right time, Yeah. happy accident, but yeah. you have to be present yeah. and ready, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's no path, yeah. there, it, there's almost circumstance. You, also, I agree 100%. Also, too, um, until you have an opportunity like Tim had to be in front of professionals, 
you don't really realize that there's the distinction between playing lead and playing rhythm. Rhythm mm -hmm. is an entirely, entirely different skill set right. than playing right. lead guitar. And like a lot of young guitar players, I was obsessed with lead playing, and Me I didn't too. really care that much about rhythm. Mm -hmm. When I moved here, I realized, oh, it's 99% about rhythm, 90% yeah. about rhythm. Duh, like, yeah. dang. Yeah, and sounds mm -hmm. and parts. Yeah. But, but again, to your point, that, <clears throat> that exposure made you go, ooh, let me get good at this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to go test yourself against the best to find out what you don't know. And I tell you what happens, you'll understand this, when you don't live in LA or Nashville, mm -hmm. you can develop a pretty healthy, healthy ego about your skills that is not based in reality. <laughs> and I suffered Absolutely. I suffered well, a little from that. Sometimes you can develop an unhealthy ego about <laughs> yeah. your skill set too. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely, no, that, that, that's yeah. really true. But you know what, the, uh, the world went to the in terms of guitar playing, the world went more to the rhythm player. The, the lead guitar player gunslinger is kind of an yeah. anachronism. Yeah. Well, it's not technical, yeah. but it's just dead. <laughs> so the the so there were years during the record business as it was flourishing, and CDs gave us a sort of ten or fifteen year afterlife, and then so and so forth. So was most of that time studio guitar player, or did you go on the road as well? What, what was the Tim Pierce mix? Uh, when Rick Springfield, and Keith Olsen got me this gig, mm. he got me the gig with Rick Springfield when, when Rick was a star. Mm -hmm. And I went on the road with Rick for four years, and I realized that that is not something I wanted That's to not, do. Not, yeah. I mean, I, I like sleeping in my own bed, but more than that, I wanted to be in the laboratory. And being Please. on the road, Getting a call to do a session when you're on the road that you can't do because you're on the road, that was hard yeah, for me. Yeah. So yeah. I came back after those four tours and I did publishing demos for three years mm -hmm. and that got my skill level higher. And by 1990, I began to start to do sessions for real. Did you do a wide range of things or did people have you in one genre or? Songwriters, basically. And I played on uh, Crowded Houses, Don't Dream It's Over. And that actually got me into a lot of songwriters' dens, basi mm -hmm. basically. And from there I started to do records. So it was basically pop, rock, mm -hmm. a little bit of R&B, you know. Lead and rhythm? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In order to be you, what kind of skill set do you have to have in terms of hearing a song and automatically knowing the chords and the notes? Like some people, like Ron <clears throat> Fair, he can just sit down with, well, what's the horn player, Jerry Hay? Mm -hmm. Jerry can just sit down and write yeah. a chart out from yeah. your thing. Yeah. I, I wish I could do that, but that's not me. Do you have that skill? No, I don't have that skill either. I work with Rob Cavallo a lot. He's got a photographic memory, mm -hmm. and he laughs at me when I struggle to learn a song that he already knows because he learned it once and remembers it forever. It's gone forever. My memory lets go of stuff quickly. If I learn a song, it's gone in about four weeks, got and then I have to learn it again. Luckily, the music I play on is very simple, and I do a takedown of, you know, I do a chord chart, mm -hmm. and I can usually do a chord chart in one take. Mm. And then I play over it, and it goes, so you it's, can it's okay. hear chords. Yeah, but it's, they're not jazz chords. Oh, okay. They're, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's an idiom that's, that we all know very well, you know. So can you hear a flat five? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. A flat five augmented seventh? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I was going to say, I, was gonna say I, I can hear a flat tire. I can definitely hear a minor seven flat five. You know, it's, oh, yeah, it's A minor over common. F sharp or yeah. C minor over A. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> but that's so important because um, when I tried to be a studio musician, this is what would happen if anybody cares. Um, I'd play something and they'd go, oh, that, that was okay, Dave, but can you change this to this, and I'm like, can you play it back so I can hear it? Because I couldn't, I didn't play, I yeah. played from just what I felt, yeah. not from whatever. But, but guitar players have been forgiven for their, uh, you know, lack of training and education more than any other musician, so I also benefit from that. you have to have a gift to remember what you just played for four minutes. That's and true. I don't have that. that but, yeah. but also, yeah. in yeah, the, true. certainly true in Nashville and, and during your studio days in L.A., Folks have to make decisions and read and do things instantaneously. Yeah, that is there's true. No, yeah. There's no lax kind of, we give you time no. to... Yeah. If you're, if you're with pro. studio musicians and you're the, the Mark Madsen of the set, you're, or if you're the, 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 the you won't be there. Yeah. They will, they no, will you request, because you'll make them look bad and they'll request somebody else. And, and on top of being able to read and make those changes, also play together like you've been together forever. Well, yeah, you have to get a sound and a part instantly. I am not allowed five minutes to get a sound. Right. Not five. Right. Maybe two. Right. 
at two minutes, people are starting to get impatient. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you know, you, you hit on something that, that um, Herb's heard, heard me talk about. Um, the importance of tone, like, like to a piano player, it's about notes. To a guitar player, it's all about tone. And how do you go about knowing, like a tone, describe the difference you would do, like a tone for like an R&B song as opposed to a tone for a rock song as opposed to a tone for a jazz song. They're all different. Would yeah, you use different it, amplifiers, it, use different guitars? Just for expediency, let's say I'm using one amp. Okay. I find the sweet spot, which might be around five or six, so that's and beginning that to distort. Sweet spot? Just where it's beginning to bloom and compress and distort a little where bit. it's starting to break up yeah. a little bit. And then for uh, an R&B song, you would clean it up. You might use the middle pickup, or if you have a Strat, you'd use the single coil pickup. Mm -hmm. There might be a little bit of hair on it. For a rock tone, you might step on a pedal to really push the front end of the amp hard. A pedal like this one? <laughs> it could be that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be on a yeah, one. that's Tim's pedal. Yeah, they, they did a nice thing. It was Rocket. Rocket Tim's makes that pedal. This for me later. A nice thing. Oh, cool. And then for jazz, which is the, probably the least, you know, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a jazz player. You would darken the tone and maybe use your fingers. But this sweet spot that's slightly distorted, you can get in front of it and in back of it, and you can find all those tones right in there. Mm -hmm. The thing I want to suggest is that. Clean tones are actually not totally clean because you want, want the amp to be di compressing a little and distorting a little so it has mm -hmm. sustain. Mm -hmm. So something mm -hmm. that reads as a clean tone is actually not totally clean. Mm -hmm. So in, to fast forward a little bit, you're the guitar player coming up today, mm -hmm. right? He's got to get his skill set down, but he may apply it differently than your path. Absolutely. Correct? My job, per se, doesn't exist anymore, where I can do, you know, I do sessions full time, and mm -hmm. I still do. The mm -hmm. last four months, it's been pretty much full time. Mm. To a new musician, I would say they have to compose, they have to program, they have to play live, they have to do sessions. They have, it really has to be a global thing. Maybe they even have to teach. The idea is to make a living so that you can keep the guitar in your hands. So, see Whatever it takes. See if this like is that. true, because what Dave and I talk about all the time is today's musician, um, as I said, Ohio U is in, the, is in the house today watching, and Chong and I went and spoke to the class last week, and one of the things I said to them is that today you have to be a hybrid. Absolutely. Is, is yeah. that correct? Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah. if you're not, you yeah. don't know who's gonna pick what, that's gonna yeah. pay your rent, and you need to be good at all of them. But it also means no less proficient. Like, you need to be good at all of it. Yeah. We find that with the show. We yeah. can't just be broadcasters and we can't. There's like, I gotta be businessmen. Yeah. I gotta do a lot of different things. Yeah. We've talked about your business yeah. when, when, when we yeah. can get to that. So, so, for all you guys out there coming up, guys and ladies, you gotta get good, but you also have to think peripherally about different ways to apply yeah. your skills, correct? Keep reinventing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. It, it's a constant yeah. evolution. What, who do you listen to that inspires you? both along the way and now currently. Do you listen, who, who inspires you along the way, first and foremost? Well, for me, my love of music comes from Top 40 Radio in the 60s. Yeah. It was magical. Yeah. And then in the late 60s, all the guitar heroes. Mm -hmm. And then in the 70s, Earth, Wind and & Fire and Steely Dan. Mm -hmm. Then in the 80s, absolutely everybody. Mm -hmm. Then in the 90s, I was working a lot and it was, you know, the guitar rock thing was pretty great in the yeah. 90s. Even Van Halen, even though I couldn't play that way. Sure. These days, I, I listen to the artists that are willing to go outside the commercial box, mm -hmm. and you know, like John Mayer's new stuff is pretty great sounding. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of singer-songwriters. I listen to Nashville music because they inherited classic rock, and you yes. still, I mean, Nashville is the, the greatest place in the world for organic music mm -hmm. at this point, so I listen to a lot of stuff out of there. So would you listen to an Ed Sheeran or absolutely. something? Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Hard yeah. not to. Do yeah. you sing? No. I tried. <laughs> the other, the other thing, there, tried buddy. for a while. Really gonna, yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you the other thing that he's picked up as what? a guitar player? He's about the most efficient guest answer of answers on this whole split. And has he a good just, tone doing he it. He just went through six decades in seven seconds. That takes most of our guests like 20 minutes. Well, I'll rectify that. No, yeah, no, you can just stump me. That's not good. I'm ready, ready to fall flat on my face. <laughs> Herb's going to go into the education side of your. Um, uh, life right now, which is spectacular. Uh, the Hey Joe video that you did on the Hendrix uh, record, uh, I cried when I heard you, man. You you nailed that. Thank you. So when you sat down to to learn that 
so that you could teach it to us. How long did it take you to emulate the tone with modern tools? Because Jimmy was using some pretty archaic battery powered stuff back then. And if the battery went a little low, the tone changed. And, uh, yeah. Well, the t that is actually one of the easier tones to get because the neck pickup on a Strat is one of the greatest sounds there is. Mm -hmm. And you can default to that and pretty much sound like Hendrix immediately. Well, the keyboard players in the audience, do a hand puppet on the which pickup is which. Okay, that's the neck pickup and that's the bridge pickup, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the neck pickup on a Strat will sound like Hendrix if you just put some hair on the tone. amp and a little bit of reverb. So that's really all it took. The thing I'll say about Hendrix is I never, ever even approach his feel because it's so elastic and so rubbery. Mm -hmm. And so I work very hard to sound okay. And so I'm glad you, I'm glad you no, think it's I, good, but it's... I didn't, I didn't, I started to go back and listen to Hendrix, so I didn't do that. But the feeling I got from it was identical. Well, that's good. Well, he was my primary reason for playing the guitar. Really? I mean, everything. Yeah. yeah. Like to, to the level of fainting, I was yeah. in at Jimi Hendrix. How long did it take you to, to emulate that from, from sitting down saying, I'm going to do this to the time it, the video was done? Not the recording of the video, but just get, getting it all together. How you know, I probably played it 50 or 60 or 80 times just trying to get it good because I was doing a Hendrix video on YouTube and I wanted to not, I wanted to be legit. Mm -hmm. So I did as good as I could do. Uh, videos I do for YouTube, I don't work that hard on now, mm -hmm. but doing a Hendrix video, I probably played it 50, 60, 70 times. Yeah. You remember the video I called you up and said, man, you killed that one? Was it an ACDC thing? I think Maybe, it, that, I think was, that, that, that turned black, out good, yeah. That turned that out good. That was amazing, too. Yeah. That's, a, that's a hard tone to get. Yeah, when I was covering the, songs. The bins are all down instead of up. I didn't do it that way, but... Uh, oh. Glad you noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've done any bends down. I don't either. Yeah. Mm. The thing about YouTube, though, is you can you can get close, and because it's it's a standalone video, you're not comparing it to the real one. Mm. You have a memory of the real one, yeah. so you can get close as long as the spirit is there. You're gonna you're gonna win. It's gonna be okay. Mm. Wow. So the, <clears throat> can the, you make your answers a little longer? I'm running out of questions. <laughs> I got you covered. Okay. The, the, the modern tools. So now you run into the space. You got plugins. You got all kinds of devices. Um, one of the old adages that we constantly sort of reach and speak to is that you've got to use the technology, not let the technology use you. Yeah. Like if you, you have to stay in touch with the passion and gift and your yeah. ears and stuff. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. And forgive me if I said this before, three years ago That's when we right. did this. Nobody will remember. But a lot of musicians confuse the transportation with the destination. Mm. And Ooh, these days, that. more than ever, nobody cares what you use to get a sound or get the job done. In the 90s, it was very important for people to say, do you have a Fender Jaguar? And for me to put a Fender Jaguar in my hands. Yeah. Now they might say, do you have a, like a surf sound? Yeah. And I can use anything, they don't care. And that's very liberating. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's actually, I like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people get caught up in the tools. Yeah. And it's not about the tools. Right. And so the new technology, is great mm -hmm. because it can get you there quicker. Mm -hmm. And the thing about a lot of these modeling devices, they actually sound modern in a way simply because they sound a bit artificial. Mm -hmm. And that's not a criticism. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. that sounds a little artificial mm -hmm. can be perceived as modern these days. Mm -hmm. So really would true. you say, Tim, they, they, they get, they capture the sound extremely well. They can capture the compression that you get from a, an ant. It's some of the articulation that they, and I don't know how to describe what articulation is, but they, that some of the nuances of, of palming and all this other stuff, that's yeah. kind of, there's a the reason that synthesizers have trouble making guitar sounds sound real is because of the right hand, which is the artist. Yeah, well, and these days it's the air. I mean, we all talk about that. You the, And they're getting better, and five years from now, there may be air in all of the, the, the Kemper and the Axe yeah. effects and all those. What's your favorite uh, go-to virtual uh, guitar amp? Do you have one? Uh, I think the Axe Effects and the Kemper are both great. I had the Axe Effects for a little while. Uh, I've and got one, and I love it. I love it, I loved it, it too. I, I actually sold it because I want to just keep the money and buy the new one when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And Kemp, Kemper was fine, uh, kind enough to give me one, and I, I used it in my videos for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, I like them both. Uh, Is there a plug-in you like? I don't use plugins okay. for guitar, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. Not for sound sources. I use... Uh, you know, Echo Boy and sound mm -hmm. tool, you know, yeah. sound toys. As, as part of your skill set, 
Are you also mixing the things that you're working on and engineering them, or? I engineer, Okay. and I when I deliver things to people that I'm doing by myself, there is a mix in place, and I'm very clear about panning Got it. and levels, and hopefully they actually adopt those. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. But not mixing. Not mixing. Got it. Got it. Got it. The, um, God, was it a year ago? But at, at some point in time, you had reached out, we met. You, you were already building something, and you, I think you were just sort of checking yourself against what we had done and seeing Absolutely. what. Absolutely. Um, and, and Tim was, you know, really generous with his time and stuff like that, and we love helping, so, I, you know. Um, and yeah, you, you are generous, yeah. Oh, no, 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 yeah. listen, we, yeah. the guys who are watching this right now have made Dave and I stewards of something. How can we be selfish about it and not give it back? I mean, uh, we're here because of guys like you. So I got time for everybody, mostly. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not you had time for me, definitely. I, I you did, time yeah. For you yeah. And, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Um, you literally have taken your skill set, which is important for people watching, and you've created your own business that you can control and teach and monetize and so on and so yeah. forth, right? Was it a step-by-step -step process? To it was, about? and and I can talk about this at length, so you may have to cut go, me off. Go, 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 okay, go. Okay, so I've been doing sessions for 35 years, and we know all the changes that will happen. Guitar on the West Coast is not the engine behind pop popular music anymore. It's a seasoning. So with those changes, my session work is still constant. I have a, mostly independent clients. Most mm -hmm. of them come to my house. It's very convenient, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. I really enjoy it. But seven years ago, I... It was actually Greg Bissonnette that, that told me about mm -hmm. Mike's lessons, and Mike is a drummer who teaches on the web. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I went, "Oh my, this is this is this is what I want to do." Mm -hmm. And then an, another friend of mine uh, told me about Marty Schwartz, and he and Justin on YouTube were the biggest YouTube teachers around. And when I saw them, I went, "Oh my, this is this is something I want to do." So Marty ended up helping me, he and his partner, Brett. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I basically made a fool out of myself for a few years trying to figure out who I wanted to be on film and trying to film lessons. Mm -hmm. And then after I'd done a couple of things, Marty introduced me to his audience. And at that point, he had about 800,000 subscribers on YouTube, a very substantial audience. Wow. So he brought some people to me. Then Brett Papa, his partner, brought some people to me. So I was able to get a foothold on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to start teaching popular songs on YouTube. I started with Hendrix because it was what I loved the most. Right. So those videos, because they were popular song searches, started to get views. So I started to build it. And over the course of four or five years, I built a YouTube audience. Then it came time to try and build a monetized website to take advantage of the audience. Mm -hmm. And once again, I simply looked at the practitioners who were doing it. Mm -hmm. There's also Scott Devine, who's Scott's bass lessons. There's lots of others, too. Sure. It's a really, really big market. Mm -hmm. And I simply took elements from each of these people and tried to make them the ones that fit me, yep. mine. Yep. So I established a premium, <clears throat> premium content web website. And it's basically a membership. I opened on June 11th mm -hmm. of last year with 100 videos. Mm -hmm. And now I'm up to 400 videos. Wow. So I keep adding content. Guitar players all over the world can buy in yearly or monthly. And the later they buy in, the more of a value proposition it is for them because they get more. Mm -hmm. And the people who stay in end up getting more too. So I keep filling it with content all the time. What I do now is I break a piece off of the premium content and I put it on YouTube mm -hmm. so that I'm able to release a YouTube video every week and keep drawing people over to the premium content. It's only a small fraction of people that actually buy the memberships, but it's a real business. And I have a full-time film editor and two part-time employees. It's a real business, and it's doing good. So, and yeah. I'm a beneficiary. I, yeah. I, love, I love the way you teach guitar. It's, uh, it, there's a, in, in the athletic world, uh, great athletes don't always become great coaches. <laughs> and in the, in the musical world, I can't imagine taking lessons from Hendrix. <laughs> Uh, or, no. or Jeff Beck. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you, 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 you do both. You're, you're, you're great, Thank you. but yet you're accessible in how you teach because well, that's a gift. Well, the other thing that you do, and you know, I've referred people to you, we've had conversations and so on and so forth, is, and this is a lesson for you guys watching, um, one, you copy success. If you want to be successful, Absolutely. copy it. 
That's all it takes to get going, and then you can make it your own. Stop, yeah, absolutely. Stop it. Yeah. And what, you, what Tim yeah. pointed out, which is important, is that you have to copy the things that fit you well. If you start to go to things that don't fit you well, it's not going to work. That's just your selector is off. But the, the idea of success is around. When he came to us, he had done his homework on Pensado's Place, and he had questions about how we did what we did. And we, Pensado's Place started, you know, basically off of a medical incident and my vision of what Charlie Rose could be if it was an audio show. Yeah. And how we could turn that around. So um, what is instructive is Tim took the steps, he hung and sustained, because it's one step at a time, he found ways to build his marketing base. He knows that it's work and that you have to provide content. It's very humble work. It is work. <laughs> and, it, and it's a relationship. Yeah. Like you yeah. have to manage the yeah. relationship. I, yeah. the Ohio you people are going, yeah, he probably said that. I heard him say yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, but Tim, after 35 years of session playing, being in the game this long, is as relevant today as we are today. And that mm -hmm. means you can do that too. That's, yeah. that's why you being and doing this to me is so important because we find so many people struggling mm -hmm. with what to do with their craftsmanship. Well, and it's what you talked about being a hybrid. At my age and in my career, it's my own version of being a hybrid. Mm -hmm. And I have to give you credit because what I came to you for, Pete Thorne and I have a show that we do together. Mm -hmm. and we've done nine of them. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to figure out how to do this thing. And, and that, I mean, it was, it was just gold to be able to find out from you guys you know, and we even, I, I called you the other day mm -hmm. and asked you about sponsors. Mm -hmm. And you told me some stuff that was very pertinent, but it was more your feeling behind what you said that gave me the real information I needed mm -hmm. to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I could tell just from your demeanor that, oh, I shouldn't do it this way, I should do mm -hmm. it that way. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was really wonderful. So Pete and I are trying to start our show because... We were so busy that a couple of months go by and we don't do it. So we, we, we're talking to another partner about making it a regular thing. So mm -hmm. it's emulating you. And you do copy people. That's all you have to do. And then you can let go of it Absolutely. and, and it becomes your own. <laughs> no, we don't, we don't copy that. Because that oh. <laughs> we've tried mixing. We're not as good as you. There's no way I could ever duplicate but, but you. This is also instructive for you because I'm a product look, of at, Cindy at anyway. some point in time, and I, we won't get off on this too much, but we want all you guys to be able to take your craft and be gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. it, it is one thing to have craftsmanship and be so frustrated because you can't make a living, yeah. and then you're, you know, you're flipping burgers or doing whatever. Um, so you have to take these lessons really seriously. The part of what I learned about this, because I didn't come into this knowing, but that you picked up, and my, my marketing team will tell you this because I'm driving crazy with this, is I'm never point A to point B straight. Uh, Marketing and marketing relationships for me are intuitive. Certain things fit, certain things don't. Certain things we can really do things well by, you got to cop to it when you can't. And then you fit things around you that feel good. It's like customizing a suit. You have a bad, ill-fitting suit that's great material, you just look like you have a bad, ill-fitting suit on. So I just, I, I just applaud you so much because guys, who have been doing it for a while struggle with making the change. Yeah. And you have yeah. to not be fearful. Yeah. You have to step in it. Well, and you have to be able to make a fool out of yourself because you're a beginner yeah. again. Yeah. So I spent a number of years figuring out who I wanted to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And I found out that it's me with about 10% extra energy. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. me, I'm a little too laid back. Mm -hmm. But, and if I go past 10% energy, then it becomes manic. Mm -hmm. So it really, it's just a little <laughs> bit of a space. lift. See, and that, that, that was my secret. Some people are born that way. They don't have to think about it. They're mm -hmm. just on camp. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, Dave yeah. and I were winning. Yeah. Yeah. because pointing at you behind your back. Well, I, no, no, no. <laughs> Dave and I were winning because we were fools. He yeah. said, you know, like, that, yeah. that's all we knew to be, and mm -hmm. that's what we continue to be. Ah. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the lessons are phenomenal. Thank you. Um, this is also a bit of a lesson on how you need to be as a professional. Do you know what I mean? A Absolutely. guy that's giving, a guy that people care about, and so on and so forth. Um, now we've got to go into that batter's box part of the thing where um, <laughs> you operate on your 10% high level. Okay. Knock him out because he's operating on his 10% high level. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's We're go for it. it up. Okay. Batter's box, hit okay. it. Okay, this, this takes a, a small introduction. Okay. I'm going to name Guitar Amp brands, and Tim's going to give us one sentence, maybe a word, uh, about a thought about that particular amp. Fender. Classic. Blues. Temper. Modern. Mm. High watt. Open. Big. Orange. Classic rock. 
Uh, Bogner. High gain, smooth, creamy. Ooh. Wizard. Classic Marshall. Marshall? Yeah. Plexi. Pla um, JCM 800. Oh, 80s. Uh, diesel. Workhorse, biggest tool in the toolbox. Oh, that's a little arrogant. Fractal X. Amazing engine. Last but not least, diesel. I thought you just said that. I said, I said last but not least. <laughs> if your studio caught fire, what one piece of gear would you rescue? Uh, divided by 13. We, we, I forgot divided by 13. See, that's okay. <laughs> Because I wrote it weird. I said, why would I write a B? It looks like a smile. Divi that's a division six. <laughs> but we're missing, we're missing the headline note. What? I don't He's think, a bad boy. Well, no, clearly a bad boy. That's, that's, a, that's a given. But in this, Sean Gore, this is 309 episodes or something. Never has an audio gear been described as creamy. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I, don't, I don't even know where to go. This is creamy. The Tim Pierce. Tim. Will you sign this for me? I will. And, and then once he signs it. Will you secure this, this guitar for me? I got me? it. I am holding this. And then maybe we'll have him noodle while, while we, okay. while he goes out. Look at that. Tim is signing his signature series. Um, I, I don't want to call it a distortion pedal because it's much more than that. It gives you a lot of different coloring opportunities. Yeah, this is like the, the uh, power section of an amp. Yeah. So it's a very clean boost. Yeah. And this is more like a traditional yeah. uh, you know, overdrive with EQ. And you can get it on, that on all the major uh, outlets. Yeah. Nice. And it's even got Tim's little sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> Tim, play us out if you and, would. And Jay Rock has got a lot of good okay. stuff. We, uh, we love you. We love want, you too. We want to put you on some panels with us if you would. Would oh, you do some be, of this that'd stuff? That'd be we'll wonderful. Be, be really great. Come on. Play, play, me, play me a little Steve Ray Vaughan. Oh, well. Ah. <laughs> there's, there's no, I mean, he's at that level. I mean. I can I can get there sort of. Absolutely. Okay. Do your thing, well, Dave. You take us home. Wow. Um, Play over, Dave. It's a much better. Oh, yeah, okay. Please, yeah. please. F sharp. There we go. My favorite key, F sharp, is brighter. Crazy train. Word up. F sharp is is the greatest key ever invented. It just makes your body vibrate somehow in some way. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we got a little, little bit about guitar centric, but that's good because some of you guys are using guitar tones without real guitar players. And, and just like a drum machine, you don't have to automatically emulate a real drummer, but it helps to know a little bit about the sound you're trying to get. So check out Tim and what he does and some greats like him, and we'll see you next week. Peace.